General Secretary of CPP. Mr. Chairman, members of the panel, all protocols observed. That we should find ourselves here this morning to have this discussion, I dare say, is there to the actions and inactions of the two main political parties in this country. At a certain point in this country, it was decided to have a national identification process. And one would have thought that any nation in the process of development at any point would want to look at that issue seriously in deciding what to do with this, what to do for and with its population. In neighboring countries like Togo, Benin, um, Cote d'Ivoire, and Burkina Faso, they have national identific identification systems which guide births, deaths, and other records of those countries. As someone said, and which we would not agree with, we are close to 60 as a country. And one would have thought that at this stage in our history, we would have been imbued with a certain level of maturity, a certain level of advancement, if not economic, at least in terms of systems and procedures, to have gotten us further than where we, got our, than where we were in the year 2000, when we, have, when we started having this current dispensation. Because if you have a system that records bets, debts, and any other vital data in a country, I have lived in Germany before and I know how it works. If you move from house A to house B, you have to deregister from house A before you go to house B. That is the sign of a credible um, population management system, which we are yet to think about in this country because I, and we believe I mean the CPP believes that if we proceed along such lines it will bring about benefits and systems that would undercut a lot of what has or what has been happening in this country I admire Mr. Esirin Katia very much and in fact I've been entertained as have all of you, you know, by a lot of the things he has said. But I would want to believe that beyond the entertainment value he has offered us, he, as well as all of us, what happened? He, as well as all of us, would commit to a system. He, as well as all of us, have the duty to take Ghana into a different direction. And it is in this light that we have made the observation as a political party that the, there is a need for a new register because the last election showed certain unrealistic increases in the voter turnout in our only uh, constituency which we held at the time and with your permission mr chairman i would want to go through a few figures in the year 2004 a total number of 40478 people voted in jomro in 2008 there was a slight increase from 40,478 uh, to 39,826. It was a slight decrease. 
slight decrease from 40,478 to 39,826. In the year 2012, we saw an increase from 39,826 to 51,286. Now, the CPP held more or less held its own in 2012 with 18,110 votes, only to be uh, superseded by the NDC with 21,651 votes. It highlights, this highlighted a certain number of issues. We are aware that the constituency held by um, Samia Nkrumah borders on the Ivory Coast. And therefore, there would be issues with people coming across the border and so on. That was a potential issue that was identified before then. But we did not believe that that could be actualized to the point of people being bust in, people being brought in by boat at night and early in the morning for them to vote. Now, the impression and the information we had was that people were brought in piecemeal over a certain period to register and then disappear quietly to the point where people were saying that Samia will get her vote, but she will not go to parliament. This is something which I believe was actualized on election day as the, as the, um, as the votes were being counted. Now, all this leads us to one thing. We need a new and credible voter register. We need a new and credible voter register. And along with this, we also believe that we should work toward a national identification system that would undercut all this brouhaha over uh, undervoting, undervoting, double registration, and so on and so forth. Because, like others have noted, we have issues with minor, minor registration. If we have a national identification system, it would be easy to root out that problem. Simplicity. If we have a national identification system, we would be able to deal with the issue of double registration. In any case, that has been handled already by the biometric um, registration. But we will be able to deal with the issue of alien registration and voting. And this actually sums up our position on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Two short questions before we go to lunch. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I want to ask the gentleman uh, this simple question. Does he know the number of Ghanaians living across the border between Ghana and Ivory Coast? Does he also trying to tell us that if we change this register for a new one, the same problems that is uh, talking about will not happen? What we're saying is not, that the, it's not, I mean, it's not based on the number of Ghanaians we know to be living abroad. If the election system in Ghana was based on knowing the number of Ghanaians living abroad, it would have been factored in in the process of talking about Ropal and so on and so forth. I know, for example, that during the Greek, um, the recent, uh, what is it, issues Greece had with uh, the European Union, the bailout, there were Greek members of parliament who represented Greeks abroad, for whom special dispensation had been made to register them as Greeks living abroad and voting. If that is the consideration we have in Ghana, we can go ahead with that. Right? I don't have to crack my brains about Ghanaians living elsewhere. We have our laws here. And the laws say you must be resident in Ghana and you must vote. 
Simple. You know, I, I did not, we did not concoct the law. We did not, like we say in, like we say in, so, if we want to con, con, uh, compile statistics about Ghanaians living abroad for electoral purposes, fine. But don't let us begin to shift the goalposts. Thank you. Any other question? Just one question. This is spe anyway, specific. Um, sorry, sorry, sir. Um, I, I need to introduce myself, as I've been reminded now. My name is Yao Adulabi, and I'm the Deputy Com uh, Communications Director of the CPP. Thank you very much. Okay, Yao. Yes, sir. I'm Tarzan. Uh, we know each other very well, Good. don't we? Specific question. Yes. You were given a right to mm -hmm. have observers at every station. Thank you very much. Did you exercise that right? And if you did, did mm -hmm. you protest about what you are alluding to now? Well, there were attempts to protest, but we decided against it. I have to be okay. honest with you. No, no, please. Please. It isn't as if we didn't discuss it. It is not as if we didn't discuss it. But we felt at the time given our size, given the level of resources and so on, it were better for us to raise it as, as an issue at the appropriate no, time. Were, were your agents at the polling station? They were, yes. And they didn't raise any objections? Well, they were overwhelmed, I would say. They did not raise any objections? Well, some, were over, some were intimidated and had to run away for their lives. Mr. Chairman, yes. I want to use this to make a general point. One of the benefits of electoral reforms in Ghana has been the participation of the political parties. And at every stage, and I deliberately quoted the chairman, mm -hmm. at every stage, political parties who are participating are allowed to observe, to take part, mm -hmm. to object. And we are sitting here mm -hmm. trying to keep all the blame on the EC without accepting that the political parties have exercised and got those rights and they must use them to protect their own selves and the people who support them. I have not sought to blame the EC, Mr. Chairman. But I didn't say you're, no, did you? No, 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 I have not sought to blame the EC. If you listen carefully to what I've been saying, I have not sought to blame the EC for our, uh, our, our situation. All I have said is that there were forces at work, right? On the blind side of the EC, I won't blame them. The blind side of the EC and my own political party at work in this process. And I am saying that going forward, going forward, we should take steps to ensure that in as much as we, as political parties, participate in the process, mechanisms be put in place eliminate or reduce such occurrences. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know there are a few questions, but I think we have to break for lunch Thank you. and come back.